It's the beginning of a new business week here on Business Incorporated. Many thanks for joining us on the program. I am Bolaji Akinwali. Coming up, the Angota Group buys a gas processing firm in the Netherlands. Nigerian banks suspend the use of Nara debit cards for overseas transactions. Plus, Senegalese uh, protest against unemployment in the country. As part of its strategies to meet Nigeria's gas shortfall, then Gota Industries Limited says it had completed the acquisition of Twister BV of Netherlands. A statement by the Dangota Group says that Twister BV offers robust solutions in natural gas processing and separation to the upstream and midstream oil and gas sectors. The statement adds that Twister's separation capabilities were built to ease production and streamline processes to capitalize on high-yield gas processing for, for maximum revenues. The president, Dangote Industries Limited, Mr. Aliko Dangote, was uh, quoted in the statement saying that this was an important acquisition for us. Twister's cutting-edge gas processing technology is fundamental to delivering our strategic a strategy to unlock about 3 billion cubic feet per day of gas in order to meet Nigeria's gas needs. Twister BV was a subsidiary of Shell Technology Ventures Fund 1 before its acquisition by Dangote and its partner, First E&P. And protesters in Paris march against the planned comprehensive economic and Trade agreements set up between the EU and Canada set to be signed later in October. Protesters marched in Paris on Saturday against the planned Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, CETA, between European Union and Canada, which is set to be signed on October the 27th in Brussels. Protesters say the agreement would deteriorate democracy, harm agriculture and public services, lower food safety along with environmental, labor and health standards, while allowing big businesses to challenge governments across Europe. If we accept a CETA that does not protect the rights of citizens and consumers, if we accept a CETA that allows foreign investors to contest public decisions, we lose in democracy. And we especially create a precedent for other similar types of agreements, including with the United States. And this is not acceptable. EU trade ministers will vote on Tuesday, October the 18th, on the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, CETA, which requires unanimous support to enter force. CETA supporters say the deal, the EU's first with the G7 nation, will increase trade in goods and services by more than 20% and EU economic output by about 12 billion euros per year. They say the boost to the economy and employment is essential at a time of low growth. Trade experts say failure to seal a deal with Canada will undermine the EU's credibility as a potential trade partner. Amelia Canoni, president of the Stop Transatlantic Free Trade Area or Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, say the CATA would cut around 50,000 jobs in France over a period of six years. When democracy works, meaning when citizens like those of Wallonia did, saying they do not want a treaty, and that in France, as it happens, we have a government which is maintaining its support for this treaty. Well, we think the Wallonian experience is a happy one. Canadian Prime Minister angrily urged the European Union to approve a free trade deal with Canada, saying failure to do so will show the 28-nation bloc was heading down the wrong path. And European markets extended losses in morning trade today as investors remain cautious ahead of earnings, key data and the European Central Bank meeting later the, uh, this week. And at with back as DWTV financial correspondent. She joins me from the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. It's good to have you on the program, Annette. Welcome. Now, the markets have remained in cautious mood, like I mentioned, since the new earnings season began last week and the comments from the U.S. Fed 
unlikely rates hike. What is the view on Market Street today? Well, actually, it started off with negative Asian markets digesting the comments, comments from uh, Janet Yellen, who actually was talking about potentially allowing inflation to rise faster or higher than 2% and to run a high-pressure economy in order to get rid of all the slack in the economy, which, of course, also means that bond yields are rising and that makes investment more expensive and that is, uh, by definition, not positive for equities. So we are seeing a negative uh, markets all across Europe today. Mm. Now, the dollar index was down 0.12% in early trade on the news that Fed Chief Janet Yellen hints on allowing inflation to rise. Do you see the currency story impacting investor sentiments in equities and debt markets? Well, actually, the biggest impact uh, is on debt markets. Of course, equities are down, as I said, across the board in the Eurozone or in Europe, but it's not a big deal, I would say. A lot of focus here today is on the fact that bonds yield, bond yields are rising. We are seeing government bonds also here in Germany on the rise. The UK gills are uh, at the highest level when it comes to their yields since uh, June 23rd, which was, was exactly the Brexit date. So you see that's a general phenomenon. As Janet Yellen is saying that they she would expect or accept inflation also higher than 2%, that means also bond yields who are actually reflecting price developments in the future are also rising. So that could be a very clever move by her because a major part of monetary policy is the so-called so signaling effect. So, by the way, uh, if markets believe that she will accept higher inflation, the markets will actually play a higher inflation and by thus also we'll see higher inflation. Well, we'll see whether this game actually works out for her. Before I let you go, investors we will be looking ahead to the ECB meeting this Thursday with hopes that President Mario Draghi would give, or could give some hints as to whether the central bank might extend its quantitative easing program, which is set to end in March of next year. What are investors' expectations? Well, the majority of economists uh, polled by Reuters are not expecting any move as soon as next week or this week from the ECB. Um, what Mario Draghi was hinting at also at the last press conference that uh, most likely major decisions will only be taken in December. In December, we'll get an update with their staff forecast, what they think in terms of inflation and also economic growth development. Um, and also, uh, what is quite interesting is that more more and more we'll hear hawkish comments from ECB governing council members suggesting that there is more resistance actually to uh, increase the QE program for example. So what will happen most likely until the end of the year is to see an extension of the program but perhaps also with a little tweak that the ECB might actually start to buy less bonds per month as soon as March 27. So you see the Tabor talk has started here in the Eurozone, um, for also for the ECB, probably not a lot, but we hear from them, though, as soon as Thursday. Hmm. Okay, we keep our eyes on that development. Thank you so much, and it was back, DWTV financial correspondent reporting from the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Still from the markets, but in Europe, where the numbers began the week on the back foot, with gaming shares across the region taking a hit, after reports that China was detaining several staff at one of Australia's largest casino companies. Shares of Crown Resorts fell 13.9% to 11.15 Australian dollars after the company told regulators that 18 of its employees, including its executive vice president of the VIP international business, Jason O'Connor, were detained by Chinese authorities. Crown said that it was working with Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade to make contact with them. According to reports, China's foreign ministry stated that Australian nationals uh, were under criminal detention by the Chinese authorities for the suspected involvement in gambling crimes. Hong Kong listed 
uh, gain in shares were lower at the end of uh, today's session. Okay, last week, Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari was in Germany on a three-day official visit where he met with the country's Chancellor Angela Merkel. And the President's delegation was Nigeria's Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Kechuku Enelama. This report highlights some of the economic and business relations discussed during the visit. Nigeria has friends in the German economy, and like true friends, they're bound in a crisis. Nigeria is currently in the grip of a recession, but is Germany's second biggest trade partner in sub-Saharan Africa. There are currently more than 80 German companies operating there. So what we would like to do is to encourage Germans and German companies to come and invest in Nigeria and work with us to build um, you know, areas of mutual interest. And this will include the traditional areas like you know, um, auto, you know, spare parts, machinery, you know, to areas like learning how you actually industrialize by training your people to be good um, um, productive workers in industry. With a population of a half million, Nigeria is a huge market and a prime location in West Africa. But the country is heavily dependent on its oil industry, and the recent slump in oil prices has left a gap in hole in the economy. The oil facilities also have to be heavily guarded due to attacks from militant groups. The country now needs investments in better infrastructure. That includes roads and power. The power sector we see as a sector of massive importance because without power you will be having difficulties to produce anything and currently just looking at the population and the need they have from the industry existing without additional investment they already have a massive capacity shortage. Breaking away from oil may be an unsettling move for Nigeria but the German economy will be right beside it. Okay, now let's take a look at the FMDQ OTC debt market. Musmola Badamose is a fixed income trader with Access Bank and she joins me on the program. Musmola, good to have you on the show. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now talk to us about today's trading session at the fixed income market. For the fixed income market today, what we saw was market open with an increase in rate. And this was due to the fact that the money market is currently in repo, estimated around 90 billion. So what we saw for the treasury bills market was an increase in rates focused on the short and medium tenor bills. Rates opened by an average of 50 basis points from what we closed on Friday. And the cost of trading has gone up further by 150 basis points. For the bond market, what we saw was an increase in rates on the long tenor bonds. Rates went up by an average of 10, 15 basis points but has gradually trended down. So day in, day out, the bond market has traded relatively flat. So there is no prevailing uh, rate at this, at this time? Yes, I didn't get you. What is the prevailing rate, the yield, at this time? Uh, for the treasury bills market, rate is around 18% on the average, while for the bond market, rate is around 15.45 on the average. So how do you think the market... Bond. Okay. How do you think the market will likely close in terms of the liquidity level? For today, we still expect market to close very straight. So for the short term of these, we expect market to be around an average of 16 to 17%. Long term of these are trading around 18.5. Medium term of these are trading from 17.5 to 18.5. That's how we expect market to close. We don't expect improved activities until liquidity improves in the money market. And since that is not going to happen today, so probably we'll look at going forward in the week. Okay. Okay. So the, the course of the week, we're expecting some activities at the market then? Yes. We have Treasury Bills auction on Wednesday. So based on where market trades tomorrow, that would influence Wednesday's auction. Okay. But what we think is that we might see an increase in rate compared to the last PMA results. All right, thank you so much, Musumola Benamosi, fixed income trader with Access Bank. It's time for a break. We'll be right back.